this study is uh, looking at if retinal palmitate um, can be used in sun cream to reduce the incidence of uh, skin cancer. So the first question says describe the results. The easiest thing to do is if you've got a, a table is to do a sketch graph. So from the table we can see that as the retinal palmitate concentration increases the time taken to develop skin cancer decreases. So we've got a negative correlation in there and that can be seen by the table that we've got. Um, one of the questions says, why were mice good model organs, organisms to use? It doesn't actually say mice here, so it, it must have been in one of the questions directly. Uh, that these were mice. So mice um, are mammals. So they have a similar physiology to humans. They also take up, uh, don't take up much space. Um, they can reproduce very quickly. Um, so it's cheap. You can do a lots of tests in a short space of time. So you can generate a representative sample quite easily. Another question is, what was the purpose of the 0.0%? Uh, percent? So that is acting as a control, so there's no retinal palmitate whatsoever. Um, so they'd have had to use the same uh, volume of, of water as what they used for the retinal palmitate and treated the experiment exactly the same. So why did they carry the test out? Well, a control is to prove the effect. So this proves any effect that we have is due to retinal palmitate. So to see if they also... to the, to see what time they develop cancer uh, without retinal palmitate. Do they develop cancer without retinal palmitate? So looking at all of the, the data we've got in resource A as a whole, should retinal palmitate be used in sunscreen uh, on humans? So the one positive we've got is we've got 100, um, which is a large sample. So the results, whatever results we have, we can say they're fairly representative. But there's a lot of no points with this. Um, so most obvious one is that, in fact, you develop cancer sooner. The higher the concentration of retinal palmitate, the less time it takes to develop skin cancer. So it would be disastrous to be using sun cream. Um, also, it's used tested on animals, so they have a different physiology to humans. So humans could react differently, could have a different effect. And the other thing is as well, there's no statistical test. So if you've got a correlation coefficient, if you've got a correlation, you need to see if it's a significant correlation or not. And to do that, you do a correlation coefficient, which is a type of statistical test. So you'd need to determine to what level of probability the correlation was due to chance. The next graph is looking at the mitotic index of um, skin uh, normal cells versus um, cancerous cells. One of the questions says to compare and contrast the two curves, so it's similarities and differences uh, that we've got. So we can see uh, that the peak for both is at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so that's the highest value. Yes, it's also highest at 8 o'clock, but it's, that's the highest value, and it's the highest value in the cancerous cells, so that's a similarity. They both decrease till 8 o'clock, and then they both increase after till 4 o'clock, so that's another similarity. But a difference would be in that whereas the cancer is higher in most situations, at 8 o'clock in the morning, the, the cells from a cancer is actually lower. So a mitotic index is a measure of the rate of mitosis, so a measure of the rate of cell division. So what time should they give the cancer drug? So with any cancer drug, you want it to kill the most cancer cells, but at the same time not damage too many healthy cells. Um, a lot of cancer drugs um, target cells that divide rapidly. So the best time to give it would be 4 o'clock in the afternoon because you've got the biggest difference between the two curves. You've got the biggest difference in mitotic index. So that means you, would, you could give the lowest dose. So you could give the lowest dose at this time and it would kill enough cancer cells because they are dividing incredibly quickly they're at the, they're dividing the fastest that they can at 4 o'clock. If you give the lowest dose, it also means that fewer healthy cells will be killed as a result. The last question is evaluate skin cells from cancerous tissues grow at a faster rate. So you can, the agree point would be at most of the time, so all times apart from 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, skin cancer cells have a higher mitotic index. And then an obvious disagree point would be, however, at 8 o'clock in the morning, they have a lower mitotic index. That's, that's the one point that doesn't agree. There's two other things on here that we that, that go against it as well. So it's 
hopefully you spotted that it's only a patient, so it's one person they're testing on. So it's a very, very small sample size. So whatever results we have here is not representative. It's also only done on um, cancer cells from skin. So you couldn't, this isn't necessarily representative of all different types of cancer either, or all different types of tissue. And the other thing is as well is, we, well, it couldn't have standard deviation bounds because it's only on one person. It's not a mean mitotic index. But if, the, if it was a mean mitotic index, hopefully you'd want to see standard deviation bars. You want to see if there's a, a, a significant difference between each of these data points. And you cannot see if there's a significant difference because there's no statistical test or standard deviation bars carried out.